Good morning and welcome to Rising. We had some breaking news developing and we're not in the studio, but we still wanted to talk about it. So that, thus this setup. Uh, Ryan, good morning. A brand new studio. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah, let, let us know. Let us know online. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> So the, the Build Back Better agenda is, is on its way to being passed right now as we speak. Uh, the CBO released uh, their long-awaited score last night, and then there was a little bit of drama as Kevin McCarthy uh, talked and talked and talked for hours all night. They expected to vote on it late Friday. Uh, they had to wait until uh, late, uh, late Friday night. They had to wait until Friday morning uh, to happen. But the, the, the numbers that the CBO uh, scored Build Back Better are, I, I think, Within the range of uh, certainly what uh, what Democrats uh, expected and, and wanted, uh, is that is that accurate, Ryan? Yeah, it was it was close enough. In other words, and so to, if people remember, you know, two weeks ago, uh, the Progressive Caucus was was broken, you know, by a coalition of of President Biden, of Pelosi, and this kind of holdout gang of corporate Democrats, and they finally were able to split the bipartisan bill a, away from this Build Back Better bill. And at the time, there was a lot of panicking in progressive quarters that that this uh, and for some reasonable panicking uh, that that they had now lost their leverage and that the commitments that the the moderates, centrists, whatever you want to call them, had made weren't worth the paper that they were written on. But the centrists had said, if the CBO score comes in in line with what the White House has told us is the cost of this bill then we will vote on it. And in any event, we will vote on it no later than the week of November 15th. That's that's this week. Now, the, the one significant disagreement between the CBO and the White House is of how, of how much money the, the bill will raise came on IRS enforcement. Uh, the White House estimated they will raise like $400 billion over the next 10 years. And the uh, CBO said, actually, we think this will be closer what, to 100 20 or something like that. And the argument, what the argument the CBO made was you don't under, you're underestimating the the stealthiness and the power of accounting firms. And that two or three years into this new regime, they will have found new loopholes that you don't even know exist. And therefore, you know, you can't count this money. That's a fairly reasonable argument, right? right? <laughs> And that's so a, that's something we say all the time on the show takes place. <laughs> right, right, for sure. And so, but importantly, Josh Gottheimer, who was a leader of these five holdouts, said earlier in the week, once that particular discrepancy was revealed, he said, look, I'm fine going with the White House number on this one, but I want to see the numbers on the rest of it, the ways and means, and uh, you know, energy and commerce and all, all the rest of the titles. And so once he said that he was okay with that gap, then it was ball game. Like it, it was clear that this was going to pass. The only question was going to be how, how many no's there were. And it looks like the only no on, on the floor this morning is going to be Jared Golden of Maine, uh, right. very likely to be a future senator from Maine, I would suspect at some point, represents a, a Trump leading district. But interestingly, in the statement that he put out, he said he's opposing it basically from the left. He's upset about the salt giveaway and he said he would vote for it when it comes back to the House if the Senate uh, reforms the giveaway and, and restricts it the way Sanders. He specifically called out Bernie Sanders. He's like, if you if you put Bernie Sanders reform of salt into it in the Senate, then that that's what I want, which is just a fascinating place that we're in that kind of the, one of the most conservative House Democrats, because he's kind of a populist is lining up with Bernie Sanders on this salt provision. And he was also angry about the the pharma provision that it could have saved something like $700 billion over 10 years. Instead, under pressure from pharma, it only saves a little over $200 billion over, over 10 years. So he was like, look, take more out of pharma and take more out of the you know super rich homeowners. And then you've got my vote. So him opposing it from the left you know, gives gives Democrats some pull, uh, you know, from, you know, because there, there's all the gravitational energy is going to be around Manchin when it, once it goes to the Senate. To, set, to have Golden holding out from the other side is actually kind of helpful. Manchin himself has said that this week, he said he's comfortable with this bill passing or this, this bill being voted on by the end of the year. He hasn't said specifically that he's going to support everything in the House bill, but he has said he's comfortable with Biden's $1.75 trillion bill. 
and he said he's comfortable uh, voting on it by the end of the year. And Larry Summers has said that you know this is basically not not an inflationary bill. So everything is really lining up uh, for this thing to to get passed. It certainly looks like it. Meanwhile, all uh, I think all Republicans are going to vote uh, against it. Yes. Um, it's an, unlike the the infrastructure bill, right, which which did attract some Republican support, much to uh, much to Trump's fury. This right. this they are all lining up against uh, Kevin McCarthy again denounced for a, an eight hour speech, which I think was like the longest speech since Nancy Pelosi's speech from a few years ago. Um, actually, we should let's play some of that. You know, when I look at this bill, it angers me. We are so better than this. You are spending so much money. Never before we spent less defeating Hitler, Mussolini, and Japan than you're spending tonight. We spent less, but it cost us lives. And you're celebrating it. So there he is you know, outlining all of his his opposition to the bill. So I assume this will make, you know, the, the Republicans need to really want to really rally uh, in opposition to this. Obviously, uh, this is going to be a major, assuming, you know, which I think is a fair assumption at this point, it all works out. Uh, this is, you know, major, a, a major victory for the, for the Biden administration, despite, you know, all of us kind of thinking that Biden came into uh, power in a weakened position, you know, not a, not with the kind of the, the same strength that Obama came into power with 10 years ago. Uh, and yet, you know, being able to pass the, these two fairly uh, far reaching massive uh, pieces of legislation um, that so that, you know, Republicans are going to have to set themselves up in, in, in opposition to it. So in infrastructure, they're not totally against it. They're somewhat supportive of the idea. And obviously Trump, it, it, as, as we've said on the show, it's very much of it is 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 Trump is, is Trumpist in its like philosophy of the infrastructure being very important, which is something he talked about all the time. But he doesn't want to give Democrats any sort of win. But they 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 pulled it off. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see you know if this is denounced if or if we go back to like the very familiar uh, you know big government left big government Democrats right. you know coming to you know, that kind of thing, um, which was a very effective criticism uh, or, and politically salient and useful for Republicans, for the Tea Party, et cetera, 10 years ago. Uh, it's a very different mood in the country. So I don't know that that you know, much, much as I yeah. might like that kind of sentiment returning, I, I don't know that it's really the most uh, politically viable. Yeah. And, and McCarthy last night quoted uh, Democrat Abigail Spanberger saying that uh, no, you know, nobody elected Joe Biden to be F FDR, really leaning into that kind of framing. And then you could you could hear, and maybe we can hear in this clip, uh, you could hear AOC yelling from the other side of the aisle. I did. My colleagues here in the House and in the Senate know it. And staunch liberals in the press know it as well. Just a few weeks ago, Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger said, nobody elected Joe Biden to be FDR. And so there's there's you know there's there's part of the party that wants to lean into it that it's like hey FDR is remembered as a great president like by the by regular normal American American people like he built helped build the middle class helped rescue us from the Great Depression and was in power for twelve years <laughs> and, I mean, <laughs> probably he, another he has, appealing aspect he had to die that. to leave office yeah right right and so it, it seems like uh, Republicans want to lean in on that. On that question, and, and Democrats do too. You know, when when Steny Hoyer, uh, you know, uh, when when he spoke before McCarthy, you know, here here here's how here's how he put it. Mr. Speaker, it is November eighteenth, twenty twenty one. Those of us who serve in the Congress of the United States on this date will be able to tell our children and our children's children that we were there when the United States Congress passed one of the most transformational bills in the history of the Congress for the people. And so, he, and so he's putting it in these 
extraordinarily, you know, historical terms like that. And, and I think, you know, with, with reason, you know, this, this first legislative year of, of 2021 is certainly from a progressive perspective, the most consequential legislative year since, since at least the 1960s, you know, we're, and as McCarthy kept talking about, we're talking about, you know, roughly $5 trillion of, of new, of new spending on new programs, uh, including, you know, significant, uh, taxes on the rich. Now a lot got left out. Private equity and hedge fund giants, um, you know, completely dodged any any accountability, any any closures of their tax loopholes. Corporate rates did not go up, uh, other than the worldwide corporate rate, but specific U.S. corporate rates didn't go up. Per, personal individual rates on on the super rich did not go up, thanks to Kirsten Cinema. Uh, the wealth tax, or whatever they were calling it, the asset tax, didn't make it in. So there's still a lot left to be done. But, um, you know, as Biden said about the ACA, this is a BFD. <laughs> right, right. And it was a, this was the window to do it, assuming, you know, Republicans retaking, uh, certainly retaking the House and like. Right, which, which goes to what Senate. Kevin McCarthy was really doing. People are like, what, what on earth is he doing? What he was That's doing his audition is, to be speaker. Exactly. The, way, the same way that Boehner gave this, this, the hell no speech to Obamacare in 2009 that really rallied the Tea Party to him to, to prove that he could really you know, take on the Democrats, that, you know, that he was going to be a fighter for the things that they believed in. Uh, this is McCarthy's attempt. I don't know. I, I, think, I think he probably pulled it off. I think there are a lot of people, because, there's a, Peter Principle isn't the right way to put it, but he's like the least offensive figure. I mean, you, you know the Republican Party better, but he's like the least offensive figure to all of the different factions that of, is of absolutely true right i mean trump hates mcconnell right, right. <laughs> so he, he uh, uh but mccarthy has somehow managed to uh yes to to not receive trump's fury but not be to not insult trump people and trump's space so uh yes he will certainly uh he has certainly positioned himself uh, to right. be that figure right so the only person happier than Biden about this bill's passage might be Kevin McCarthy. Right, right. All right, well, thank you all for tuning in. We'll have more rising after this. <laughs>